Welcome to More Lock and Me, a weekly podcast where we discuss books and their cinematic adaptations. Uh, once again, I am Charlie. And I'm Michael, hello. Uh, and this week we're going to be doing something very special. You're so lucky this week. Um, we're going to be talking about the true crime genre as a whole. Um, we're not going to be talking about it just as books and films, but we're going to be talking about it sort of through society, really, just how our interests have peaked, um, talking about it through the different kinds of media that are out there and the different sort of things that basically are, we can access and that we enjoy and that there's a demand for. So that's what we're going to be talking about first. Um, I'm really quite excited because I love the true crime genre. I don't know about you. No, I'm, I'm not excited at all. <laughs> I can already tell. <laughs> no, no excitement whatsoever. Um, but uh, I, I, I'm really quite excited. I, I sort of almost suggested this as like a special because we've decided we want to do, <laughs> we want to do specials uh, once a month. Yes. Be it, but we're going. We're not just going to do it about genres because that would be very, very boring <laughs> after a while. And um, so we're going to be doing different specials about different sorts of things. Again, you can always recommend um, to us what what sort of uh, specials you want to hear from. Uh, we're on Twitter at more like me. Just uh, shove that in there. Um, <laughs> Smooth. But we're <laughs> so smooth. But we're uh, we're going to be talking about the true crime genre today. Uh, yeah, I, I've got so many notes on this. We've done literally, literally done. I've done so much work on this because I I'm a sucker for the true crime genre, which sounds like I really should be locked up for for saying that. No. Just, I love about murders and robberies and crime. No, we know this. It's fine. You can talk about this. It's perfectly <laughs> normal to be interested in psychos. It's fine. Yeah, you know, it's just my hobby. <laughs> 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 I just loved, you know, it's just a casual murder. I'm like, hey, I need to read about that. Um, but no, I do, I don't know. Like, it, it's that weird thing where it's because that's the sort of the whole whole thing. Like, we sort of there's no real point to start off on this. I sort of was saying to you before, like, why should we start this off? There's no real, you know, they, there is no definitive point to go. Let's start here for the true crime genre because there's no real starting point. But I think one of I well, I, I can always just start with just why I like it because. Well, I like you Dude, know, I why, yeah. Why not? Well, there's there's so I don't know. I think it's because it is that whole idea that it is quite alien, like the idea that people can go because we're not just turking talk, turking who turking. turking turkeys are in this apparently. Um, we're not just talking about um murders or anything like that, but we're just sort of talking about like crime as a like as a whole kind of thing because we're talking about different elements and and sort of different subjects really because. There's so many different things that are up at the moment, like the serial podcast and Making a Murderer and um, My Favourite Murder, which is sort of our new favourite podcast. Nice. Check it out, guys. Nice. Uh, little little dibs to them. Um, you know, and there's so much out there. But then there's also different elements um, such as like fictional or based on real um, life, like Orange is the New Black, um, the, the new film about the craze, which is Legend, which stars Tom Hardy. Um, there's uh, the uh, Michael Shannon film Iceman, which was about Richard Kuklinski. Uh, there's even like main fictional characters like Dexter or Breaking Bad, um, where there's the element of crime, where essentially the main character is like an anti-hero, where you really shouldn't like him or her, but you sort of go oh yeah you know i can kind of see myself in them obviously not maybe the murdering part but the more of the maybe everyday dilemmas that they go through like relationships friendships work etc so i think I thought you're admitting to something then i was a bit like what okay is this yeah this is this podcast? is my this is now my taped confession <laughs> <laughs> um but that's kind of sort of the element and the angle we're looking at so we're looking at multiple um sort of medias we're looking at books we're looking at films we're looking at tv we're looking at uh documentaries we're looking at podcasts we're looking at basically a lot of different things so we're not just pigeonholing certain things by doing our usual spiel which is just books and films slash tv shows we're sort of opening everything up really um but yeah i just i i just sort of feel like we should i i thought it was a really good one to talk about and now i'm sort of just like i'm the one that's only talking about it but like because <laughs> i kind of dropped you in it with the saying i wasn't interested thing didn't i i shouldn't have done that i know i felt like i needed to just sort of like make room time there just like uh well i really like it this is you know we're doing this for a reason um but yeah like well we've sort of talked about different things like we're trying to because it's such a large genre we can't yeah. really include everything but we feel like we should talk about maybe things that either stand out or that are you know that are quite up there and are quite relevant like things yeah. like serial making a murderer stuff and, like that and stuff that drew us into it because i you know per personally speaking i haven't 
always been interested in this stuff like the you know crime procedural shows i've watched a few of them i enjoy um castle mainly because of nathan fillion um but my man crushes aside uh, yeah i wonder why you uh, like it so much <laughs> um but you know it's it's only recently that i think there has been this proliferation particularly because of serial and now because of making a murder it's kind of taken over that focus and it comes down to something essential about storytelling i think of why we're interested in it that we'll get to later as a sort of conclusion it, in an hour and a half mm-hmm. say when we finish talking about it yeah no it's like well because we were saying because we're big fans of the podcast serial which yes. um is fantastic like season one we feel was better than season two and i think that it's kind of the element of why you know mainly for the true crime genre of why we find it why we prefer it because the first one is about a crime which maybe uh, maybe it was it was quite prolific and quite popular well not popular but it was it was read and, and written about in baltimore in in the late 90s but for sort of across the pond and maybe other parts of america no one's heard of it and so it's that element of learning about the characters um you know learning about the the the, the people and the time and sort of what happened really and like just sort of how how the the crime came about and maybe that there's elements of maybe someone's lying maybe someone keeps telling bending the truth or people keep saying different elements part it and it sort of builds and builds and builds and through each episode you found out more and you were like hooked because you were like what oh so maybe this happened maybe this happened like me and my sister because my sister introduced me to this um and uh she was like you have to listen to this because it literally each episode you're either changing your mind or you're just more and more drawn into it i was like oh you know i don't know, I think a podcast and by the end of the first episode i was absolutely hooked whereas i think the 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 second season which is also very good because they've obviously done their research and they've got you know they've really they've really gone to town with it but i think the problem is is we kind of know the outcome yeah. because the Bo- bergdahl sort of case um was in the news it's quite relevant you know everybody kind of saw it on the tv like i remember seeing on tv we all and we know what happened because he it's not as if he's still out in afghanistan or still out being held by the taliban he's home we kind of know why he did it now you know it's kind of it was just i think the main thing of what the question was was you know is he a traitor or is he a hero what which one is he but we kind of knew that with this first series of the adnan syed case um in the murder of Heyman lee it was it was just so like what is this case who are these people why did it happen when did it happen what are the circumstances you know all these kind of questions and that was what hooked us i think Mm, and this is what with a lot of things like things like making a murder and um you know sort of finding out other stories like um there's another podcast show called criminal where it tells you about different cases from present to you know right into like the 1800s so it's, it's again it's different but it's that element of sort of you you don't know a case i think that's yeah. what interests you even if even if or like it, it's kind of it's sort of you know uh, a, a difficult thing because people go oh you know there's high cases like the whole thing of like maybe for british people like the whole lord lucan case of like what mm. happened to him because he um supposedly murdered the nanny and then um disappeared and he's only recently what like 45 years later been declared get dead it's like is he dead is he not why did you do this why did you do that Where, what's happened it's kind of that thing so i think it's sort of it's either you don't know the, the case at all and you want to know all the details or maybe you have heard of it and you know it but you don't know all the details it's kind of that element when you've got everything you're like oh well i know what happened yeah. so yeah i think particularly with season two of serial it's the mystery's kind of not there mm. and that's the whole point of serial or at least i felt it was i you know the level of journalistic integrity in serial was really interesting she um what's her name Sarah Koenig. Sarah Koenig, thank you. Um, she goes in depth and, you know, she admits that she goes backwards and forwards between believing Adnan and not believing Adnan. And I think what the first series did so well is that it understood the difficulty in human memory. And the, in terms of, can you remember what you were doing exactly this time a week ago? Mm. Probably not. So how are you going to remember that you're doing what you were doing 14 years ago or two years ago or you know starting things like that and i think the best ones of the best cases and the best examples of these and the best stories in this 
are the ones that make us question not only what's going on and the mystery involved, but actually what we would do in the same situation. And a lot of the time, and I'm speaking very personally, I don't know. Mm. And that, the ability not to know and maybe be uncomfortable about it, I think pushes us as people and perhaps that's why we're so intrigued by it because we don't necessarily understand why they did what they did but at the same time we don't understand what we would do in the same situation yeah no i i know what you mean it's it's that idea it's kind of it sort of makes you second guess everybody you know like not in a <laughs> not in a, like a bad way but sort of because when you hear about cases of people who were you know comp- you know like like the whole well i don't know if it can be like said as like a, an everyday case but the whole thing of um the making a murderer because i sort mm. of i saw that over christmas and i got you into that yes you evil so and so it was it was just oh it's such, if you haven't watched it yet i know 10 hour long episode seems mm. like it's going to be a shock but absolutely watch it like yeah. i'm categorically so, saying 10 hour long episodes and then you're gonna want to read the michael greaseback book the innocent killer because it delves into the first case mm. a lot more than the series does and the second case a lot less yeah. and it's a really different perspective so you know if you want to give up 10 hours and however many hours it takes you to read the book do it because it is worth it if you don't believe us that's fine but you're wrong <laughs> yeah sorry about that harsh reality <laughs> um but no it's you know it's kind of that the idea of making a murderer is a case of just this man who he kind of, you know, he was maybe in a bit of in and out of trouble, nothing mm. too severe. <laughs> there was some severity. He threatened a woman to get into the boot of his car with a gun. It was quite severe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, okay, okay. Well, the idea that he he seemed like a nice guy and came from family, like, you know, when you see him in interviews, yes. I think. Yeah. Because I think at the end of the day, when you see him, what the thing is, is that when you see him, um, Stephen Avery, in Making a Murderer, maybe in the first episode, well, throughout the whole series, really, is we don't know him. No. We don't know him from Adam. We think we know him, but we don't. Um, and he does come across as a very nice, you know, he's not the smartest of chaps, you know, he's kind of bumbling, you know, he's got, he's very sweet, you know, he's, you know, he's quite adorable in a sense because he's, yeah. you know, he, he just sort of talks about family and he talks about wanting to go home and like his family are very lovely because like they put so much effort into trying to get him out. And you do think, oh, you know, what a, what a lovely guy. But the crux of the day, he has been charged with this murder of this woman and it's, you know, it's quite horrific, this crime, yeah. really, because there's there's sort of a sexual assault in there. There's, um, you know, being supposedly shootings in there. You know, it's it's a really quite difficult case to kind of go, oh, I still think he's kind of a nice guy. Because yeah. as much as, because it, sort of in Making Murder, he is accused of a crime at the beginning, which he is then found later, well, 18 years later, he is found innocent of. So is it is that element, and there are a lot of inconsistencies because we do see that, which I think, again, is what made you, you know, your, yourself and I really angry because mm. they do show you everything of the case and there are inconsistencies, there are elements where you could see maybe the police tampered with evidence. But at the end of the day, we don't know this man, but we think we do because we've watched this documentary. And I think that's the element of what does kind of draw us in it's kind of like you try over the course of either you know even if it's a fictitious character like maybe dexter or something you watch them for so long and you kind of you know everything because you've watched every episode you've read every book you've seen every podcast you've seen every like conspiracy kind of video on youtube you know whatever you know you've seen everything a little bit of an insight into your mind there (laughs) yeah definitely don't do that um and it's kind of it kind of makes you think that you know this character but at the end of the day you don't know this person be it fictitious or be it reality you really don't know the character and or the person and so you're kind of sort of drawn into this world like i've had an argument with somebody where i'm like stephen avery is is innocent and someone's gone no he's guilty and you kind of bat and go well Stephen did this on this day and you're like well you weren't there you're not his friend you know you don't you've never been to america and i'm like oh yeah <laughs> kind of forget that like you know i'm just a, i'm just a bystander because that's what we are we are just bystanders in in each case and each yeah. of everything because you know at the end of the day if a crime happens then suddenly it be it at a place or a certain area it suddenly becomes 
sort of not a shrine but kind of like it becomes sort of a landmark as like that will forever be remembered as the place where this happened where you know this this shooting this whatever happened you know it's kind of that's that's that place becomes sort of immortalized yeah i think that's an interesting point actually i think humans are attracted to things that put them in danger mm. almost it's a strange thing of adrenaline and it's why i think people go on ghost tours and go into like the dungeons in edinburgh and the sort of under city streets and things because and particularly with edinburgh they know that a lot of people died there in some fires and and things like that and i think anywhere you know that something like that has happened it immediately kicks in that fight or flight response even if you know that you're not in danger it's mm -hmm. the thing of something has happened here need to be on my guard mm -hmm. And it's a little bit of a thrill, you know. It's why we go on roller coasters. It's why we take any risk because the payoff could be amazing adrenaline kick. But at the same time, it's almost a slightly insane mm. idea because you're going into a place where there was danger to feel a deliberate danger thrill. Mm. And I think with making a murderer the it's almost of living vicariously uh, mm. through watching the case develop watching it unfold and when particularly and uh, you know we'll go into detail particularly when uh jerry buting finds the unsealed blood vial mm. at that moment it's a punch the air moment you know yeah. genuinely i actually did go that's you know i yelled out that's amazing mm. because it's so suspicious that there's a syringe hole in the blood vial from Stephen Embry's previous case it that it seemed to all be connecting and then when it doesn't exonerate him when they don't find the um chemical in it to that says that from Teresa Holbuck's car that says that it was taken from that vial it almost trips your brain up mm. because you're so sure yeah. And I think that's another element of it that we everybody has a theory. Everybody is a backseat lawyer or a backseat police officer. And everybody wants to talk about it to the degree that we get into fights and arguments with each other about something that we have no control over. And I think with this kind of thing, and it's I think it's particularly in... Um, not to be disparaging or anything I think it's within nerd culture any nerd of any culture somebody who's in, who's really interested in a subject I would say is a nerd I'm not saying that negatively but I think we've got to a point where a lot of us are really comfortable discussing this kind of stuff just in a pub or in public and not feeling judged for it unnecessarily so we do have sort of almost shouting matches with each other particularly you know i know you have a theory about stephen avery my theory differs and we've talked about this quite a lot i don't know whether you want to give your theory on stephen avery now uh, let, well, let's let's build to that i think i feel we need to build to that um but i completely agree with what you're saying and, and things like that because it's not, like you know with the whole thing of like talking about the ghost tours and that i've been on the when i used to live in london i uh i <laughs> casually drop that in there yeah, just casually drop in there um i'm that person um i went on the jack the ripper tours mm. in Whitechapel. i did admittedly go three times <laughs> because i i but and this is the thing is like i'm i'm the biggest sort of like you know i'm the biggest sort of in an, in an, in a weird kind of way in the nerdy way in which you're saying yeah I do have an odd, not obsession, I think obsessions are wrong one. I feel I just need to say this, I'm building up to now. But I, I find the Jack the Ripper case very interesting. And when you go on these tours, they meet you at the like at this at the Whitechapel station, um, and you sort of go around and you go to all the areas, be it where the from Hell Letter was found to where the first victim, second victim, third victim, all the victims were found and like all sort of the main areas like where you know, items of clothing were found or where the police officer was supposed to be, where the double the double um, sort of murder happened on one night, where the police officer was doing his rounds and came back and then found um, the, the fourth fourth victim. 
it's kind of you go around there and you see all the places and and it's fun it's oddly fascinating because you do go for a long walk it is a long time it's like two hours it's mm. like you know it's a really long thing and you start at like seven and what makes it sort of eerie and i think what makes you sort of really get in because you kind of do lose yourself in it because the, the mainly in sort of summer when they they mainly do it is the the sun starts going down mm. and so sort of as you get into the more gruesome and nitty gritty and sort of like you know where things start of getting like the pace starts picking up for the murders is it starts getting really dark and you're moving around Whitechapel and there are a lot of people around in Whitechapel at that time and you're kind of just you start getting a bit like oh mm. okay oh I suddenly now feel now understand why it's quite scary in London like it's scary in London on your own in an area you don't know because I hadn't I did yeah. when I first went I had never been to Whitechapel before and so I was a bit like oh okay and I did go on my own because you know I'm cool like that <laughs> um, um, and um, when you walk around it's like you can let alone in the 21st century where we've got police around every corner we've got mobile phones you know you can run into a pub and it's fine but back in the in the sort of victorian era you could yeah. just so imagine how much more terrifying it would be yeah and with the environment you know from the way films represent it in terms of the london pea super and all that sort of thing where you genuinely cannot see five feet in front of you mm. and so anything could be in that fog and i think those tours are so evocative because they take you back to a point where everybody was much more anonymous yeah it's it's kind of and you know even to this day it's well supposedly there's a book out now that's that's found the jack the ripper but i don't know if that's 100 percent true um but it's kind of especially because we studied jack the ripper at school mm. we did that for like a history project in like year 10 or something and um they uh you know they make you sort of do like leaflets on it or draw like pictures and stuff like that you know just things and you look through all the books and and they're they're the, the sort of character of jack is kind of in different sort of garbs in each place you look like some places he's wearing a top hat and uh you know in a black cloak and he moves mysteriously other places say that he wore like a flat cap and was just dressed like a normal person and that's kind of who it would have been it wouldn't have been this you know sort of grand man who probably could have been identified in the slums of london mm. it's just kind of like you just sort of didn't know who it was and you still don't know to this day it's kind of like with any case like the black dahlia case or the zodiac killer you don't know who it is it, that case, those cases are still open and obviously, naturally, how many Jack the Ripper films are there being? Yeah. You know, there's there's been episodes. You know, they did um, the the crime drama Whitechapel, which I very much enjoyed uh, with Rupert Penry Jones. And there was an element of a copycat killer of Jack the Ripper. And so again, it brings up all that thing of that our fascination with it. You know, there's been countless films of Jack the Ripper. There's been films about the Black Dahlia with you know the hottest actresses and actors of our time. You know, and then the Zodiac Killer with like you know really big names in it. Yeah. And it's that thing of just you know as much as they're painting the characters in a bad light of just these were horrible crimes and stuff like that we're making a film about them yeah. so it's it's that you kind of lost it already like the whole idea with um well i've brought this up a few times with the craze the craze wanted to be famous they wanted to be notorious they wanted their their sort of their legendary status so to speak to go on and, and to be glamorized and it's happened because how many films again and tv shows have there been about the craze there's been hundreds of books written about them Yes, they're not being painted in a nice light, you know, in the books especially, they're not being painted in a nice light. Um, and it's kind of exposing the true crimes, but books are selling about them. Yeah. People want to read about them. And then when this new film Legend came out, which starred Tom Hardy's both Ron and Reg Cray, and, you know, and other countless, you know, very good actors, people flooded to them. And what was the picture called? Legend. It was called mm. Legend. And so supposedly this film that's supposed to, like, paint them of, like, these horrible gangsters who controlled London... They called them legends and it's giving them what they want. And that's the kind of the element of where you go, oh, okay, maybe the true crime genre has gone a bit too far because we shouldn't be, we should have just ignored these horrible people and we shouldn't, you know, of any stature, like the whole other thing of what's controversial was like the People versus O.J. Simpson that just came out, which was, you know, a 10-part a series with, again, hundreds and hundreds of, you know, really fantastic actors who are getting awards from it like you know we'll probably they'll probably get emmys they'll probably get golden globes they'll probably get all of this for a case which was very controversial like there's a new documentary that's just come out i witnessed i saw the trailer for it yesterday which is called oj made in america and it talks about the both sides to the, not not just white and just black like not you know not that divide or anything like that but like 
everyone's opinion of suddenly when he was arrested and it was kind of the climate of you know um black people didn't have the rights that they do now or probably not even still have the rights they should have you know that that kind of thing of discussing races and especially in in at this time um as when the case did come about it was tensions were high because two years before there'd been the the riots uh, in in LA and stuff like that and it was just like people didn't want that again and it's kind of they're drawn into it and so this new documentary that's coming out we've not seen it yet because obviously it's just come out the OJ in America or made in America um it sort of talks about like suddenly through this trial OJ Simpson became a civil rights activist and Mm. so but did he was he really fighting for the rights of sort of you know himself and black people or was he just you know because like what they've said in what they did bring up in people versus oj simpson stuff like that was that he was you know he kind of sort of was black but became white in a way in the sense that he was in in the second episode they actually say that um (laughs) there's not us saying that this is what we're, we're we're repeating no um but one of the um black lawyers says to his friends across the fence who are having a barbecue whilst they're watching the pursuit on the freeway he they are arguing whether oj was the greatest black footballer um and he says that no he he's never given back to the community he just left with all his money he became white and then the joke is that the other african-american characters say oh well the police are chasing him he's black now yeah it's kind of that uh, that thing because they say you know in i've seen a few documentaries about this whole thing because it kind of all came back up because it's been it's been quiet for ages and now it's kind of all come back up of like oh you know it's kind of gone mad the whole because at the end of the day people you know i i'm not 100 percent sure i i because I, i'm i wasn't around like i was like well, i don't know like <laughs> six or something when this this case happened so i wasn't around but <laughs> you weren't yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know how, how dare i um but from what we've seen and even from the drama from the documentary from from elements of re- of of actually like looking into the case it's still very murky as to you know was he or wasn't he i can't really stamp it down because i've only seen a few things mm. and i wasn't around at the time so i don't know but it's kind of it's interesting because you know there were the things of saying like you know oh where are all the pictures of him and his white golf buddies you know yeah. like he kind of he left you know his home and his friends and where he was from because he you know he he rose up through the ranks because started becoming an actor was an in, in, endorsement for like you know was getting paid hundreds hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars and um you know he he sort of just people have said that they did stop seeing him as being black and saw him as being white and it's kind of that element again it's kind of it was controversial and it's like when the the document well not documentary sort of really but the the adaptation and sort of the dramatization of the case it really does go into that and that again i think is what makes people interested is because m- maybe for because it's kind of sort of i don't really think it was aimed at our generation but we're the generation that watches tv a lot and watches new things you know what i mean yeah. like you know when anything new comes out yeah. And it's like, oh, it's had rave reviews. Yes. Everyone's got to see it. Everybody's got to talk yes. about it. Everyone's um, got to have an opinion. As millennials, we're the binge-watching generation as well. You know, it's the thing of going, oh, just one more episode. And then it ends and you think, oh, I can't I can't leave it there. I can state now, I did watch all 10 episodes in one day. So I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to admit that right see, now. And see, I, I take responsibility for that because I turned you on to OJ. So, you know, that's my vengeance for making a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's difficult it's it's a hard thing you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm taking the medication for it. um <laughs> it's um not a confession podcast folks not no, 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 nothing like that but it's again it's that element of it's well the whole thing of what i find because you know at the end of the day we i i love shows like this like i love making murder i love serial i love um you know my my favorite murder podcast where they do talk about you know their favorite murderers and why they like it and stuff yeah. like this which is interesting you know i'm sure you know and i love the people the, the people versus oj simpson and i love reading about stuff like this and you know it's wrong like we're glamorizing criminals murderers you know all sorts of people that do so all sorts of horrible things and the problem is is when we give that sort of notion of excellence and glamour and sort of like hollywood stardom to all these characters 
there are copycats like there was the you know there's so been so many mass shootings or or killings and stuff like that where people have just gone i want to be i want to be famous like um i believe it was the, well, what it sort of became like the dark knight shooting or the joker shooting mm. where there was the the shooting at the um at the sort of screening of the dark knight um in, in america and um this guy just walked in and just just basically just had a gun and just went mad and killed many people and he just he's obviously not right you know anybody that can go and do that is not right in the head you know no matter what how they've been brought up or anything there's something not right there's, there's a switch where someone goes i need to do that and that's not right and um it when you know sort of when asked it's just kind of like oh well you know like i want to be just as famous as everyone else yeah and i you know i think that's part of how society works around it in that we are fascinated by the other as an idea and when people cross societal lines and break the law in such a dramatic way and i think the word is dramatic it makes it attracts us to the drama of it it makes us wonder how far away the rest of us are from that line you know is it as to use a completely random thing in terms of there's a line that the punisher says to daredevil in the most recent series which is you're one bad day away from being me Mm. and i wonder and obviously that's a terrible example because it's fiction but i wonder how people do think around that as you know and particularly the my favorite murder ladies who frequently say we're terrible people Mm. or say things you know saying we don't know why we're interested in this we are it seems loads of other people are as well it doesn't make you a terrible person even if they jokingly admit that they are it's that question of what pushes you is there something that pushes you are you like that anyway or is it going to be that murder just happens i you know it's Mm -hmm. I, i think it's a terrible thing to think but is murder ever going to go away and given how many mentally ill people we have in prison and particularly in america how many people they have in in prison and the fact that with um the innocent killer book michael griesbach uh questions whether stephen avery was corrupted further by prison in particular he says he wasn't right before he went in and he definitely wasn't right by the time he came out Mm. and he believes wholeheartedly that Stephen committed the second crime there's very little doubt in his mind which I find difficult because there was so much doubt in my own mind and there's obviously the exoneration case that Michael Griesbach was part of and then he suddenly goes oh no he did it about the second thing yeah it's it's interesting kind of because it's so difficult to because at the end of the day it's sort of like murder and the crimes and things like that that happen in society it's sort of become like sort of second nature like you know there's probably every other week there's a there's a mass shooting in America which is always very sad and you know it's another person who maybe even didn't there was no help or didn't seek the right help that they should have you know and has gone and instead of just doing you know trying to just seek help or do something they've gone and done something horrific like a mass shooting or shooting at a school or shooting at a cinema or something like that you know there was um a case i read about the other day which is very horrible which is in america about two brothers who murdered their parents and two younger siblings mm. because they wanted to be famous and they wanted to have a film made about them and you know they wanted to be famous and because you know that's why they did it they they plan to kill more people so that they could be famous serial killers yeah. and when it gets to time in society where we've got young people who were like you know there was there was 16 and 17 when they did this and this is very quite recent it was it was in the paper the other day and it's kind of when we get to a society like this where there's actually people who will go because i'm sure what give it five years they probably will make a film about that to explore maybe mm. the psyche and to go well why do you know they'll, they'll they'll pitch it to be like well why did they do this you know what was going on in their lives you know maybe they'll make up some you know they'll dramatize 
something you know that maybe one of them was severely unhinged or something like this or you know i don't know because like with the whole thing of the um columbine high school shooting which was mm. absolutely you know it was horrific you know they they've they've tried to you know there's been glamorizations of that admittedly not not to the extent of like there was elephant by um gus van sant which is it is a fantastic film it is you know which is based on the the shootings and leads up to it but again it's it's giving essentially the killers a face with a, a famous face really um you know and it's alluding to all sorts of things like they were you know homosexual together and things like this and it's just kind of like well why does it even you know why do we have to look into this why do we have to find out and it's the same with these two brothers it's like well why is there going to have to be a film you know why why do why do all these horrific crimes have to become our sort of new entertainment really like why do people's miss you know sort of why do people's misfortune and upset and hurt become our entertainment because i'm sure the um the victims of of murders and stuff like this would would probably not want um glamorous films to be made about the killers of of you know their children or their 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 loved ones or things like this and it's just kind of it's it's difficult like to sort of because you know even even us talking about it we're sort of essentially being hypocrites because it's like well why should we talk about it well let's talk about it you know it's kind of we're you know we're no different um but i think that that's why we wanted to do this episode because we wanted to talk about what is the allure (laughs) yeah and and say what like ask you guys what's wrong with us please tell us we'd we'd love to know um (laughs) please help (laughs) um i think yeah it's it's really difficult because i think that's why if we if we're gonna do our usual thing of coming down on what media we think is better at this kind of genre and i don't you know we don't necessarily have to do that because it's a special episode and we want to break the mold occasionally but i think that's why books and documentaries and podcasts might do it slightly better than films because the glamorization is less yeah it's not putting the violence in front of you in the same way because i think on film violence is glamorized to a certain degree and i'm not of the opinion that it makes us more violent as a society i think that it can be a very useful device to show how brutal some people can be to each other but at the same time it doesn't help when films like legend call themselves legend yeah because there's obviously there's there's books which are written like orange is the new black yes by piper kernan which was written about her experiences sort of what she went through you know her regrets her you know m- maybe the life decisions she wished maybe she could take back you know it's a real sort of lay you know heart on your sleeve like yeah. i made mistakes i paid for it and this is sort of like my my story so people maybe could even learn from it yeah and there is a distinct lack of glamour to the book of Orange is the New Black. It is very much, you know, she mentions frequently that her eyebrows are crazy and that there's fungus in the showers and that there are dangerous people that you don't want to run have run-ins with. And I think it's a very, I, you know, I've heard mixed things about the book and having read it myself, I really enjoyed it. Mm. And I thought that it was an interesting take and that she was an interesting person much more so than her dramatized counterpart who i cannot stand yeah i we've we've discussed this you don't really like the tv series i do like the tv series i i I don't this is probably me being a bit controversial i don't know if that's just because being a woman (sighs) i know how dare i say that but being a woman seeing sort of what goes on because i think we've we've seen so many things of like men's prisons like yeah. prison break yeah. oz you know so many other tv series where it's all about men and what they get you know like shawshank redemption is another good um sort of like element of what goes on whereas i think this was kind of one where it really focused on what happens in women's prisons and yeah. maybe why women have gone to prison and stuff like that because you know yes you know there's you know it's from piper who's just like smuggled a lot of drugs into people who've maybe have murdered mm. people who have been part of like the mafia like red being part of them sort of like well not really part of the mafia but being part of like some russian organization yeah. you know and from like you know things that maybe we wouldn't really think that you'd spend a lot of time in prison for like maybe possibly stalking or like you know 
you know like there's one girl who is obsessed with this guy called christopher who she's like he's my, in prison she's like yeah he's my fiance my fiance he's my fiance we're getting married as soon as i get out and then you see it and they went on one date and she becomes obsessed with him and mm. he, she actually broke into his house realized that he was engaged to someone else and like her wedding dress was in there and she put the wedding dress on and it's kind of that delirium of she still can't accept that he's not going to be married to her yeah. and so it's kind of and she goes for prison for it because she broke into the house and she won't stay away from him and it's kind of you sort of do see the struggles and you know the ideas of you know sort of what people go through and they do make it gritty to be fair then it's not as if like everyone's stunning in there and covered in makeup you know and it's it's you know it's a very it's you know like, it doesn't make people go oh i'd love to go to prison yeah but it's a right laugh you know but it does make it that you know people become friends and you can all find a little family and you can all you know it's all fine i'm sure it's absolutely the opposite i'm sure it's horrible i'm sure no one's your friend i'm sure you're looking around your shoulder every five minutes there's no like oh let's all have you know let's all have hugs and be best friends i really don't think it's like that at all and that's the element i think which i do disagree with as much yeah. as i do like it i do disagree I think, with it i think it's interesting because in the book she mentions that danbury the facility that she's in is low security and i think the people that and she does make friends of people that she would never ex have expected to make friends with and when she's taken for another member of the drug rings trial to uh I, th I can't remember the exact location but uh i think it's utah i'm not entirely sure mm. um she is kept in a higher security facility and it is awful there are people there who should not be there not because they didn't do what they're supposedly guilty of but because they're just mentally ill and they shuffle around and it's just soul destroying and i think the fact that the series changes details like she gets back with uh, the character's name in the series is alex the her name in the book is nora her real name is not that um but in the book she doesn't encounter nora until this trial which is way way down the line into the end of her sentence whereas obviously in the series in order to up the drama alex is there from the very beginning and introduces herself at the end of the first episode and it's kind of like it's like you know it's the it's the romance it's like yeah. what makes you go oh i love i love those two together oh i wish i can stay together and you're like you're talking about two people in prison yeah. that have smuggled a lot of yeah. a lot of drugs from one, one country to another one of whom landed the other one in prison yeah supposedly and i think and and as the series develops piper does some pretty reprehensible stuff mm. whereas in the book she knows she made a mistake but in prison she largely manages to stay herself mm. and i think that's one of the most life-affirming things of the book is it that it doesn't make legends of mm. the criminals it humanizes them yeah and i think that's perhaps what we need to look for with these adaptations and things is not to exonerate by making these people into living legends or um deceased legend or anything like that it's to actually find the humanity in them mm. and not forgive them mm. but perhaps find it within ourselves to realize okay maybe they made a mistake or maybe something pushed them to this or maybe they're not ment mentally capable yes there are some people who just do it because they're unpleasant it's difficult to say whether they're evil mm. um and i think we're getting into a whole other debate if we go down that road but i think you need to search for the humanity in it because otherwise it can start to crush you a little bit yeah well, it's kind of like the elements with going into sort of slightly fictionalized um well not really it's true crime but um goes into fictionalized the idea that three characters have come from like because I, I don't know if you know this I, I, I actually found this out which was quite shocking because it's three possibly three of my favorite films was actually based on one person mm. so um it was the texas chainsaw massacre so um leatherface yeah there's uh, science of the lambs uh buffalo bill yeah and psycho norman bates yeah all three characters are based from one man's oh. actions which is a man called ed gein there are actually films and TV shows about him and he does a, a appear in some elements of stuff. But basically he was this man who did basically all three things. He 
had his entire he was like you know everyone really didn't know about him he just kind of you know used to babysit kids you know he'd be you know he's just kind of like oh it's ed you know just like he just has a house at the end of the road you know he's kind of he's all right you know just keeps himself to himself whereas in reality he he had like pretty much the whole of his house with was upholstered in human skin wow um he was very close to his mother and kept kept her i believe kept her corpse in the top attic you know um casual and had like masks made out of human skin human faces and stuff Mm. like this so again where it goes so it connects to all three characters and it's again it's that fascination of it but they're taking it like each element that they take from this this person they like absolutely go mad with it like leatherface you know that he's this crazy person that you know has a chainsaw and chase you down and it's kind of that element of you're stuck in the middle of nowhere and that's what makes it scary and that's what kind of makes it non-believable because you're like yeah "Yeah, i really don't believe that you know and with uh with science of the lambs as as much as it is a very fantastic book and it's you know it's and it's a fantastic film as well it is fictionalized and it's kind of it's to the extreme of just again could this really happen or like oh i don't know it may be very rarely and then norman bates and stuff like that with psycho at, at the time was and even still it is a masterpiece you know at the time it was terrifying the idea of just someone could just go that mad and you know and and it's fantastically acted as well that that you know it's that they can just shock by going that crazy you know like and you know and stuff like that but the thing which makes it even more terrifying i think as a horror film all three horror films really is that it's they're all based off a real person and it's kind of that thing of where you're trying to go oh none of this is real no one would ever do that and you realize and you go oh my god it's actually oh my god oh my god there's actually someone that existed like that oh god you know and suddenly the nightmares come out of nowhere but it's it's that that thing of of i think because there's so many documentaries there's so many things like there's one called um cropsy which is on netflix which is really interesting which is the idea of the boogeyman you know who that you know goes out you know you don't go into the woods after that cropsy will get you and mm. he's going to kill you and stuff like this and it's a, it's like a thing like a sort of an urban legend for kids really of like you know you wouldn't go in there and stuff like that and that actually turned out that the reason why people were so scared was because there was an actual child killer out on the loose yay who, yay you know which is really fun and so things like that so it's sort of be, you know it's kind of the idea that these sort of stories and that become urban legends which then all the most in themselves take a life of their own which turn into films yeah and you're just kind of like oh, there's this cycle where it just keeps going where it's like you know it's you just and maybe not so much now because i think with the age of technology we're not so spooked and scared because you can kind of like look stuff up and go is this real is this is an urban legend but like maybe 10 years ago it's kind of it was terrifying because you, we didn't have the technology we have everything was pretty much word of mouth you get told a story which would then spread like chinese whispers and then you'd be terrified and that's sort of where the true crime you know as a kid kind of comes in because you're kind of like uh, you know there was there was so many things like you know Blair Witch was a big one for when I was a kid because there's um near where sort of my hometown there's this like you know there's there's a road through it you know it's like a main road and stuff like that but it's the scary like there's it's a woodland and stuff like that and as you go past a certain bit there's an old tumbled down cottage and you're like and we always used to say that's the Blair Witch house and again that's where it takes on a life of its own it's like you know it's it, it kind of becomes in society that like we say things as a joke like oh don't go in there or witch will get you or something like yeah. that or you tell you know it's like the 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 safety story to kids of maybe not so much now but you say you know don't go in there because a bad man will get mm. you and stuff like that and you're terrified it's that thing that's instilled in you of or there's a story that you know we always you know you you go around your mate's house and you have the this you know you get the, the torch in your face and you tell the ghost yeah, story sort of, are you afraid of the dark scenarios yeah like kind of you know where you 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 regale these stories that maybe you've been told by a friend who's been told by a friend who's been told by a friend you know it's that element of it where it sort of takes on a life of its own and it's kind of that's where it comes into society more where you are terrified because it's that sort of it takes you back to those days where maybe someone told you something like you know don't go in there or someone will you know a man will take you or oh don't go in there my friend disappeared or my sister's friend's brother's dog yeah sitter's cousin went in there and disappeared you know and i think that's an interesting thing about my favorite murder as well because they have people come on who they know or just people contributing to their facebook group and things like this telling stories about their hometown and it seems from their perspective that every little town in america has 
a murder story mm. and some of them are quite famous and some of them aren't really well known but i think it does go i think you're right it does go back to that almost primal fear of the dark mm. of the unknown of things that can get you mm. and the fact that we can watch it safely through a screen mm. or read about it safe in the safety of our own homes yes you know we can still be concerned about the possibility of it but the fact that it's almost a oh it's not happening to me that's good yeah it's it's weirdly reassuring in a sort of a counterintuitive way mm. in the same sense that this whole podcast is counterintuitive because we're going yes this is wrong but we love it yeah like it's it's because i think the end of the day with a horror film or a thrill film or a psychological film anything like that at the end of the day you can turn the screen off and walk away and go mm, don't want to watch that anymore it's fine and you can kind of walk away from it but it's still like it's that thing of you know it, it will all bo always boil down at the end of the day to have you heard this or mm. have you read this have you seen this have you heard this podcast or have you heard about this and it's the word of mouth that's the thing that spreads it is one person goes because I, I think I've told everybody about making a murderer yeah, when I when I you definitely have <laughs> <laughs> when I when I first saw it over Christmas because we went mad back because my dad told me about it yeah. and my sister had gone yeah I've heard it's brilliant I'd never really heard anything about it no. I think I'd read one article but very briefly and I was a bit like, eh, might watch it. But with my dad going, I've heard it. It's, it's been really re well reviewed. And my sister going, yeah, a friend of mine's seen it. She said it's fantastic. You suddenly go, oh, okay, I'll watch it. And you watch it. And it's like, it's something that, again, it's that it's that element of if someone goes, it's fantastic or go, oh, it's brilliant. You know, oh, you just wait until you get to that conclusion or yeah. oh, wait until this bit. Or, you know, even with like elements of like, uh, fi fictional characters like Dexter where you're like oh wait until you see the season finale what he does and like oh that bad he gets his comeuppance and you're like yeah okay I have to watch it I have to watch it I have to watch it and it's that need for just oh I need to that conclusion or I need to yeah. know what happens or I need to see something else that you you just sort of go well why why do I have to be obsessed with murderers and, and people that are like very horrible that I shouldn't you know that I would not want to meet or I would not want to go anywhere near and yet uh, it's kind of my you know weekly routine to go <laughs> i must watch this you know it becomes that thing and it's like but why and i don't really think we can possibly ever say why you know unless maybe if we were like you know complete psychologists but we're not unfortunately You're like not. I'm, I'm fully qualified i don't know what you mean. oh i didn't take the test that day yeah. i'm sorry um but it's i think it is that it's that essence of that there's so many elements to it like you resort to the primal fear of 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 um of the dark you know and that you're scared of you know if you watch a scary film and then you hear something go bump in the night mm. it's suddenly you're like oh okay i don't really believe in ghosts but it could be a demon you know like <laughs> you know silly things like that you know or it could be a murderer that's hiding in my be a demon you know it's like oh it could be a murderer hiding in my attic or something like that you know something so silly but it's like if you've seen it in a film yeah. or if even if it says like but that that famous phrase based on a true story yeah, as that... soon as you've seen that everyone's like oh, well it must be real then yeah. oh you know it's so real and it's just kind of like well is it though i'm sure it's ba like you know when they say like psychos based on true events it's based on a man that did yeah. a crime you know it's kind of it's not the whole thing's real there's not a Bates Motel you know because even then that's that spawned a, a TV series which is like super popular that's yeah. again you know that's it's the idea of something that people find really popular that they just can't get enough of that like you said does that maybe if they try and find the humanistic qualities to it you sort of want to watch it more because you want to try and relate to them and go I understand why they're trying to kill all those people you know what I mean like <laughs> again it, insight into your brain um <laughs> that we don't necessarily want no i think i think you're right i think it's really difficult to separate the various reasons that people watch it for and i think we can posit theories but it's for me it comes down to just storytelling mm -hmm. i think it's a very human part of all of this and why we do this podcast is because we like stories we like being told stories we like discussing them we like talking about the twists and sharing them with each other you know you've told me about books that i then read and absolutely loved i've done the same for you you've waved your arms wildly around about tv series and i've just got okay calm down i'll watch it um just don't hit me and i think it comes down to that aspect of being a human is that it helps us to understand ourselves but also put ourselves into other people's shoes 
and it's almost in the most hopeful of senses an empathetic thing where we're saying oh god you know poor Stephen Avery he was put through so much or if you've got the belief that he's guilty you go well if he even if he didn't do the first crime maybe he should have been locked up anyway mm. and that's a really for me that's a really difficult idea because six years of his original 18 year sentence he was going to do anyway because of a previous crime um so he was in there wrongfully for 12 years which is you know three times his mm. sub, sub, what his sentence was supposed to be which is ridiculous and i think 18 years in any one place would drive mm. anybody insane particularly if you know mm. that you're there incorrectly yeah. and I, but i think on the other side of the coin it appeals to our need to judge other people yeah. and it makes everybody the jury and it makes everybody the judge and to a certain degree obviously not literally it makes us the executioner it makes us damn other people because of what they've done when you know i can't say that i've not i've never lied or you know i can say that i've never committed a crime but i can't say that i've never done something that I regretted and I uh, because I was being stupid or because I was afraid or because I wasn't thinking straight because of some weird reason you know even if I was just tired mm -hmm. it's it's human to make errors and yes these are big errors that we're talking about but and we have to take responsibility for those but at the same time if you're not in your right mind then the degree of responsibility changes and particularly when we're watching this and, and digesting this sort of stuff it brings out the darker side at the same time as the light side and I think it's finding the correct balance and realising maybe I've invested too much in this or I am watching it because of the thrill it gives me as opposed to thinking about it rationally and dissecting it mm. and i think it's very difficult to pull yourself back from a series that you're so interested in particularly making a murderer because i know there's been various discussions that we've had with each other and with other people and then there's times where some people have said to me oh yeah it wasn't really that compelling mm. and i just go what mm. and it almost makes you angry because you're like no but because of this thing and we get so invested in stories because it's what humans do they invest mm. in things that it isn't necessarily ir irrational to invest in like just random keepsakes mm. and i think tvs and movies and podcasts and all this sort of thing almost become intangible keepsakes yeah it's it's difficult because I think what also is an element to sort of, you know, what everything that <laughs> that is our obsession, well, you know, everyone's obsession with things, is I think there's that element of the doubt of maybe mm. of just like you're constantly doubting. So you, there's there's no clear cut way of just going, yeah, this has been done and so this is what's happened. It's kind of as more information you're given, the more doubt is crept over and they kind of go well maybe this happened instead or and every five minutes you're changing like with everything like with the whole thing of serial i still don't know if adnan sayed is is guilty or not nope. you know at f you know there was the element of first i was like you know he's definitely innocent oh no actually i think possibly he's guilty oh no maybe he's innocent you just don't know and i think that's what keeps you sort of hooked because you're like we don't know no. we do not know and then at the end of the season i was expecting to go I think he's guilty. Yeah. I think he's innocent. Well, something like that. And she wasn't. She was like, I don't know. I really don't know. And then you're going, well, I don't know either. Oh, oh, thanks, Sarah. We've we've come through this whole journey with you, and we all don't know what's going on. You know, you sort of it's that thing of you just keep guessing. And I think that's why it was so popular. And it's the sense of the of again with like um uh not orange is the new black um what's the one other one making murder that's the one There's so many we've talked about um is that sense of you're given so much and then when when the the um the nephew comes into yeah. it it's again it's like well is he telling the truth but then he keeps recounting and going 
no i'm just saying what they told me to say and you're like but all right so what is he isn't he help us really and because he's not the brightest sort of like pickle in the barrel you kind of sort of don't really know whether he's telling the truth or if he's just trying yeah. to please them like if he's just telling the truth and then panics that he's done something wrong so he goes oh no no i didn't mean that you don't know what he's saying and then it's like well then is it true is it not true i i'm so confused and you get more and more concerned and it just keeps going round and round and round and you kind of it kind of makes me want to go do a second season keep going yeah. keep going but it's like well there's nothing more to say because he's been sitting in prison so there's nothing really more that can be done about it but you kind of want it to like that's why i hate it when as much as i love and hate it you kind of want kind of as humans we kind of need that sort of yes he did it or go no he didn't do it mm-hmm. so you go right okay to give sort of the ambiguous end going well did he didn't he i don't know anyway thanks very much no, bye and you go yeah. no 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 tell us more please i need to know you know you you need that sort of that vi- sort of that sort of pointing finger to go yeah. you know this is what happened and you go cool the the fact you're just sort of left on sort of essentially a cliffhanger you're kind of like oh no like you i like i've done so much research on that Stephen avery case since then i've literally looked at every like because they've there's so many things where people just go Stephen avery is guilty and this is why read this blog about it and you go okay and there's another one they're like Stephen avery's definitely innocent and here's my video on youtube why and you go great okay i'm gonna watch that and you go yeah i see their point and then you go oh yeah i completely see the point i don't know what i was thinking about that last one and you watch another one another one another one and you're like oh god i don't know what even to think and it's kind of like like the one i was like the first one i was ever completely obsessed about was um alien warnos it was like it's essentially one of the first serial killers really in modern history who there was a there was a documentary which by one of my favorite documentary makers which was nick broomfield and he did two documentaries on her and there's like the whole time through her trial she's like i am i'm innocent the men tried to sexually abuse me because she was a prostitute at the time mm. it was like they tried to do things i want i wasn't agreeing to and i had to act in self-defense i had to and there was this like element of i you know because she had not been brought up well she had to defend herself she's been on the street since she was like something like 14 or something so she's come from a really difficult background and so you know there's the element where you can see in her eyes it's like this desperation but she does really like she comes across as a very strong person it's like it's only in trial where you see her cry you know you don't see her when she's on her own and stuff like she gets angry and mad and stuff like this and then at sort of halfway through well nearly the end of the trial she goes she admits and she goes i want to say that i did kill the men in because it was like six men she killed and it was like i did kill them in cold blood and then she recounts it when she's talking to nick and goes i didn't the society are trying to pin me down and you go what is real what is not yeah. and then there was the movie that came out with um charlie's theron um and christina ricci where you know it was fantastically acted and like they really really did a great job because they didn't make her look like charlie's theron they made her look like alien warners yeah. where she gained weight she she looked like her so it wasn't that like oh i'm really pretty and you know oh, it's really unbelievable you know it was kind of they really did it but again it's that element of looking behind the character are we sympathizing with them or is this what happened like we don't know we can't really because there's so many conflicting arguments yeah. and that's i think what again keeps us enthralled because we don't have that definitive answer we don't know which record is right and which is wrong we're just going round and round in circles and that's why we're hooked until we find the next story to find on the next thing that's going to go oh my god i've got so many different elements to it but i don't know what is real and what is right and it's that 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 sort of that almost need of i like i'm already saying that already because i've I, the next need for me was the um after um making a murder and serial was the people versus oj simpson yeah. now that's finished i need something else i need it it's like a fix really like i just need i need to i need something else i need something more and that's kind of i think maybe one of the definitive reasons why we love the true crime genre yeah and i think it's interesting talking about making a murderer because it's been accused the makers have been accused of leaving some salient details out and it's how to what degree we this decide to take things at face value and these sorts of stories and these sorts of crimes show us that really we can't take anything at face value we have to make our own decisions and we have to dig as deep as we want but that doesn't necessarily mean that any of the information we've got is credible is true because the way and you know you in in 10 hour long episodes you can't possibly fit everything from over 20 years of a man's life even if most of that time was spent in prison 
it's very difficult to get every element and they you know they do include letters that he sent to his ex-wife that are very abusive mm-hmm. and they include th- they include the previous crimes that he had done and and they talk about those but then there is some stuff that they've missed mm-hmm. out and there's different connections that they've missed and at the same time the Michael Griesbach book pretty much glosses over the second trial so it's quite a long it's not a very long book actually it's it's but it's mostly the first three quarters cover the the crime from which he's exonerated and then the last bit covers the making a murderer case really um where they he sort of glosses over the accusations of police corruption and uh, talks about officer lenk and whether they planted the keys and all that sort of stuff because we all have an opinion on lenk yes (laughs) um but you know it because there were so many searches over that period of time and then these two guys from the manitoc county suddenly find the keys and but he says oh no 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 officer lenk you know he's he's his integrity is without question and we don't know these people and documentaries like this make us feel like we do like we were saying earlier but for us to go oh no he is a corrupt cop it's impossible for us to actually have that opinion and back it up we have no idea and it's like you say the fact that we have no idea is really frustrating but at the same time it is that exhilaration of going of being able to go i don't know Mm. and i kind of like it yeah like with the whole thing of like the corrupt cops and stuff like that there's another glaring example in serial where um ritz and mcgill mcgillgrey um when they're interviewing jay to get his statement and they like they 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 get him to the station at something like what three o'clock and then they start taping his sort of not confession but his like statement at six o'clock and you're like where are the three hours why there's you know what have they been doing for three hours but then they do get um like a professional like ex-cop to come in and say like you know did they mess the case up you know have they have they not done it properly and he's like no they what they've done everything they've done is absolutely toward board i cannot fault their case yeah. and you go but but there's but you know and you're there going but we've heard the tapes we've heard you know sarah's told us this and but, but why and you're like well, there's that element of again you know it's that that thing of we can't really control it because at the end of the day we're just listening bystanders mm. we're not part of the case we weren't even part of the trial or the jury we're not part of nothing and yet we've all got our opinion we've all can, you know you know like i can turn around and say which i've always said which is you know adna you know adnan probably did have something to do with it but i think jay had something more to do with it yeah that's my personal opinion but that's from what i've got like someone could take something else completely different like my I, I, a friend of mine was like no jay definitely did it and i'm like oh, i don't think he definitely did it i think this but it's because what we've all taken from it and that's the thing it's like it gets us in conversation it gets everyone talking about it like when serial came out there was um um like a video by two comedians who I watch on YouTube and they were talking about it and they were having a discussion but it's like for a joke and you're just like but even then that's yeah. the that's the impact it's having that everybody's talking about it literally like as soon as it hits it hits big like making a murder when it initially came out it's kind of like I don't really think a lot of people had heard of it like there were a few reviews I was like telling everybody I knew I was like oh my god you have to listen you have to watch this you know it's amazing you'll get so angry about it because you do and then suddenly it was everybody was talking about it it was everywhere there was so there were reaction videos there were analytical videos it was in every paper it was you know there's people that are like you know let's try and get um, a petition to get a retrial or something everybody suddenly gets involved i really don't I, it's all sort of done and gone now everyone sort of then moved on to the yeah. people versus oj simpson yeah, and it's that element of just we pick something up and go oh my god i love this so so much and then soon, suddenly as soon as a new toy comes in yeah. for us we throw the old one away and then you know i'm sure all the petitions that were for Stephen avery's case are now complete no one's done them anymore mm-hmm. and they're looking at stuff that maybe you know everyone's talking about the oj case and it's like and then we'll talk about something else when the next thing comes out and it's that that element of we're just looking for the next thing to talk about where we're like what happened and i think you know that sort of boils down to why we love the the genre so much and why we're fa- maybe not love it but maybe why we're fascinated with yeah. it you know why we keep going back to it but that's that i think is probably the definitive answer maybe yes. 
I as, think as definitive as we can make it in a podcast where we're not psychologists, we're not police officers, we're not lawyers. <laughs> we but but we have decided <laughs> that that's the truth. <laughs> this is the answer, and that's gospel. Um, well, you know, it's, we've we've talked about it for wow, nearly an hour and ten minutes. Okay. Like usually our podcasts are maybe forty forty five minutes. We've really pushed the boat out because we we want to do we wanted to talk about this properly. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's a genre. Like obviously, we wanted to include as much as we could. There's going to be so many more that people will go. Well, why didn't you say this? Why didn't you say that? But we've tried to concentrate on things we know that either we've seen, we've listened to repeatedly, that we know that we, you know, we can talk about it. So that's the reason why we've included the, the elements we have is because we know about it and we've read the books, we've seen the podcasts, or you know, we've listened to everything. You know, we 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 wanted to do it properly. So we hope we, well, I hope we've done it justice. I think we've done it justice. <laughs> Talking about it for now, yeah. nearly ten, you know, rambly justice, rambly rambly justice. Um, so yeah, I think we should probably. That's a good place to end because yes. you know we've we've literally exhausted it to the point of recognition now. Um, but um, so we hope you've enjoyed it. Um, let us know your feedback on this, and if you'd like us to do something similar, maybe we, you know, hopefully for the next one, we'll talk about <laughs> something else. We have an idea in mind. Yes. We we won't tell you because we want it to be a surprise. Um, but we've got an idea for the next one. But if you do have any ideas of if you want us to do a genre one, if you want us to talk about something else, then do let us know. We're at Twitter again at Morlock Me or right in the comment section. Um, next week we sort of we're very excited about next week. I think oh, Michael's yeah. more excited than me because Michael's more of a fan. What are we doing next week, Michael? Oh, we're doing something very special, Charlie. Um, <laughs> tell us, tell us. <laughs> I shall tell you in my radio announcer voice. <laughs> we're doing Star Wars: The Force Awakens, but we're doing the book of the film as the adaptation because it's different and it's very rare these days that you get a book of a film i think star wars is one of the very very few that still does it just because it's traditional and having started reading the book it's an interesting difference there's bits and pieces that are changed more than i thought so we'll yeah that's what we're doing next week and then we've got plans for numerous episodes after that so stick with us uh, we will see you next week. <laughs>